All right, in this video, we have, um, are going to look at an ordinary annuity problem. And I just want to remind everybody that the ordinary annuity problem is basically built on top of the compound interest formula. Compound interest formula. Okay, and let's assume that we are starting with um, P0 dollars. The initial amount of dollars, let's say we're starting with $500, okay? And we have an interest rate R, an APR, an annual percentage rate of 5%, so that's 0 0.05, okay? And let's say our compoundings is 2 uh, for semi-annual semi time periods. And let's say that we want to allow this money to grow for if T is equal to 5 years. Okay, but additionally, what we want to do and add to this problem is to assume that there is an R value, and this R value is going to be the amount that we are depositing uh, to the account. Uh, we're depositing, let's say that we want to deposit um, $100 um, every time period, and the time periods in this problem are the time periods are equal to six months uh, because we are compounding twice a year and so we are going to deposit on this same time period scale so every six months and the question is what is the effect of the deposit on the the amount of money the principal in the account okay the p0 dollars the principal is going to to grow under compound interest okay but we're also adding in deposits that themselves are going to earn interest and i'm interested to see how the deposits change over time now ultimately what we're looking for is a formula to use uh, this formula is going to be quite complicated, and I can write it down in a moment, but I first wanted to just make sure that we could use our spreadsheet and know how to do this in an itemized hopscotching in time kind of way. Okay, so if you need a picture here, let's uh, take a look at this picture. Uh, we're dealing with five-year time periods, so here's time zero, here's time five. So let's mark off time one two three four five and we're compounding twice a year so i'm going to put two x's in every year period okay so and we want to hopscotch hopscotch across time knowing that our p0 value the amount that we are depositing the lump sum is five hundred dollars okay but i would like you to imagine also that ev at after every six months, so here's a time period right here, this X right here is our first six month time period. That's one time period, two, three, four, all the way up to how many time periods? 10, right? So we have a total number of time periods, total number of time periods, of equal to the n value times the time so there are 10 time periods that we're looking at and each of these time periods at each of these x's where is where we are going to come in and we are going to deposit a hundred dollars okay and it's these deposits where we are going to to really make a lot of money okay so what we're interested in is coming up with the um, principal, the amount that includes the amount that we are depositing. So I think we can see that P0 is still 500, but we know that P1 is going to be the $500 amount, and that dollar amount is going to earn interest 1 plus um, I where the va value i is equal to the interest rate r divided by n. And I think we can see i in this problem is 0 0.025. So we're going to earn interest. But then that was us hopscotching across time, right? But once we get to that x where there's a plus $100, we are going to add in $100.
okay? And we can see this from our uh, sheet that is going to be um, the, oh, let me, actually, sorry. Uh, how do I X out this formula? Okay, sorry, this was supposed to be $500. So let's start, make sure we start with the right amount. And the amount that we're going to have after one time period, that orange uh, arrow over there, is going to be 500 times 1 plus uh, the I value. And that I value is in the B4 spot. And because I'm going to drag and drop formulas, I want to make sure that I put a dollar sign there so that we're always using that I value. Now this is the amount, 512. That would be the amount... If we just let $500 grow, P1, that would be 512.5. But we've done better here. We have taken that amount, and once we get to the end of compounding of interest, we're going to add in our $100. So now that we can see that P1, the orange P1, the principal that takes into account the payment, is $612.50. Okay? Now, how do we go to the next? value p2 the p2 value is going to be earning interest simple interest interest on the p1 value so that will be one plus the interest rate per period and then when we hopscotch over here and let the value grow with interest we are then going to make our deposit again okay so the p2 value is going to be the p1 value that one that took into account our payment, one plus the I value again. The I value is in B4, and I'm going to make sure that that's always the same. And then I'm going to add in the number of payments, the amount that we pay, which is $100, or deposit into the account. Okay, And let's make sure that that B5 is always a B5. So let's put a dollar sign there. And now that you think you got the basic handle on the formula, one can develop a formula and progress across with Excel, right? And let's double check to see if our formulas are right. This, where did this 840, sorry, P2 comes out to be equal to 727.81. And we can see from Excel or the spreadsheet, from the spreadsheet, that we are going to get eight hundred and forty six dollars and you know oh one eight hundred forty six dollars and one cent and where did that number come from it came from our p2 value let that earn interest and then add on to that our deposit of a hundred dollars okay now if you can now the nice thing now you understand those formulas you can drag and drop them and so our payment, if we keep doing this 10 times, right, our last jump there, P10, the amount after 10 total time periods is going to be $1,760.38. Okay. And again, we don't know exactly yet what the formula was that does this directly. The goal is to figure out how to go there directly, and that will be a formula, right? But my claim is that that formula is going to come about if you understand each of the cells of this spreadsheet over here on the left, okay? So let's take a look at this. Uh, let's um, interpret this number that we are seeing right here, P10, okay? And just to kind of get a sense of how, how important making the deposits and, and um, how making the deposits was important to allowing this value to grow a lot. Okay, so because I have this spreadsheet um, grow um, nicely set up, I think I can do this real quick. If we took P0 dollars of 500 and you allowed that to grow um, without making without your deposits, right? You would have um, P10 after P10, let's assume that you put a zero here. Okay? You would have only $764.93, okay? That would have come from the formula just in pink, 
P0, which would have been 500, times 1 plus 0 0.05 divided by 2 to the 2 times 5. That's where this 764 value comes from. But fortunately, we have not just let our money grow as a lump sum. We haven't just let that go across without deposits, right? We have actually made deposits of $100. And now we've got $1,760, right? So what we are seeing here is that if, sorry, if P0, P0 dollars of $500 with making our payments comes to a P10 value of 1760.38. And if, and again, we're looking for a formula here, a formula, still, still pausing on that formula, we don't know it. But I do want to take a look at this number a little bit and see if we can really understand what it means. Notice that, that your amount that you have uh, deposited out of your pocket, you had to come up with P0 dollars out of pocket. These are your out of pocket costs. To get this whole thing started, you had to come up with $500. That's $500 you may not have really wanted to invest. But let's see what the value of that was. Let's see how, how important that was. And let me see, we had $100 payments and there were 10 of them. So we had 10 $100 payments, and that's equal to 1,000. So we have a total out-of-pocket, a total out-of-pocket of, what is that, $1,500. And can you see the difference between those? The difference between this number and this number is the amount of interest, the interest added. How much we gained over a five-year period is $260.38. Okay, so that is the, the value of making regular payments and those regular payments themselves earning interest. Now that, I think, is a very interesting number. It's a lot bigger, and this is something that is, is good, to, good to know, okay, how interest is working. Now, without much ado, I'm just going to write down a very complicated formula, okay? And we will um, to talk about in other future videos how maybe to, to go about finding what this formula was. So I'm just going to state, um, state without proof, right? Uh, but that proof is based on state without proof. But the proof uh, where this formula comes from is essentially just doing what we've done Excel and just looking for a mathematical pattern in there. But I'm going to state without proof that the amount of money, the principal in an account over time, if you um, had P0 dollars that was growing at an interest rate of R percent compounded N times a year for T years, but then you are also making payments to that problem. So we're going to get an additional amount of money. And the formula will be 1 plus R over N to the NT power minus 1, complicated looking formula, over R divided by N. Okay, And if you take into account both of these formulas, the first part of the formula is your initial value growing with uh, with interest. And then the second part of the formula is the one that is coming about because of our payments. Okay, So as a final check, I will take um, this new formula that we got and I will put in three, sorry, five years into it, P of five. And let's type in this complicated formula. It's going to be our P0 value, 500, times 1 plus um, the interest rate divided by the number of compoundings, R divided by N, to the N multiplied by T, so that's our 10, okay? And then I'm going to add on to that something even more. I'm going to add in our $100 payments. Okay. 
I'm going to try to do this formula again. Uh, let's see, see if I can control C that. It's the same thing, one plus R to the N. Now I got to put parentheses. Like I said, this is a complicated formula to put in. Minus one, and then I needed, probably Desmos would be better for this. Let's see if I can, minus one, and then I need divide by R divided by N. Ugh, R divided by N. Now if I got this right, typing it, I'm going to be ecstatic. And I didn't. Okay, so uh, let's go to a different uh, different tool. And like I said, Excel is not the place to, to type in this formula. So I will go over here and let me pause and bring up Desmos. All right, I've got Desmos up. So let's see if we can uh, take these values that we have and plug in this formula. So here's a formula, P of T, okay, is equal to P0, which is 500, multiplied by 1 plus the interest rate is APR 0 0.05 divided by divided by 2. We're going to raise that to the <coughs> 2 times 5. So there's our uh, there's our part that is coming from the simple interest on $500. And we're going to add to that uh, R100 multiplied by all of this stuff in parentheses. So I got to do this again. One plus 0 0.05 to the two times five. I'm going to subtract one from that. Okay. And then all of that needs to be divided by, you can see uh, R divided by N. So that's zero. 0 0.05 divided by 2. This should be 0 0.05 divided by 2. And let me close my parentheses here. Okay. Now, I'm hoping that this number comes out to be what I expected it to be. That is where the 176038 comes from. Okay. So if you put in all the values, you will get 176038. And future videos will talk about this formula and how to uh, maybe where it comes from and maybe some more examples of how the impact of the payment R affects the amount of money growing over time. So ends this video.